Hey guys, welcome back to another After Effects video. Now I'm always getting requests for more map animations. So I wanna introduce you to a new technique about how to create this old historic style map, but I wanna show you how you can track objects to an animated moving line. So let's dive in and get started. Now this is the map that I've sourced that I'm gonna be using for my project today. Now the map I sourced from David Rumsey Map Collection, now they've got tons and tons of maps old historic sort of maps that you can basically, it's a great resource to source all of these different sort of maps. Now, when you're downloading them, you wanna try and download the higher resolution version. So 6,000 sort of pixels, because we're gonna need all of that detail for when we zoom in. I'll link to this specific map that I'm using in the description, but also recommend just going and checking out their terms of use and all that sort of stuff for using it in your own projects. So what I'm gonna do is create a new composition here. And this one's gonna be 1920 by 1080, be about six seconds in length and then hit okay. Now we're not gonna use this map layer straight away. We're going to start by using this map, the original map layer. We're gonna right click and create a new comp from this selection. So you don't wanna to touch this layer. This is the map composition that we're gonna basically animate all of our ship and also the line and everything like that over. First, I wanna draw out a travel path for my layer. So I can add just a small stroke on here. I don't want any fill and I'm just gonna start by selecting a point somewhere, wherever you wanna start yours from and then just sort of bring it across here. So we're just drawing a straight animated line at this point. With that layer, what I can do then is come into the contents, down to shape, and then down to the stroke path settings. And we're also gonna add a little stroke animation or a bit of a, gonna add some dashes to this. I can sort of zoom in here just to see what I'm doing. But all we're doing is just creating that line of the path of travel. Now, obviously you wanna work out exactly where that path is gonna be, and you can create whatever path that you want but I'm just keeping it simple here for mine. Then I'm simply just gonna add a trims path to this. And I can also just have it sort of start and then towards the end of my composition, it's sort of gonna animate on like this. So we sort of have this line animating and that's all fine. Next, what I've got here is I've sourced this old image of this ship and I want my ship now to follow that path. So the simple way that we do this is we come up to window and then we come down to create nulls from path. This is like a little plugin that's built into After Effects. What you'll need to do is come down to the path one and make sure that path is selected. So this is the part that you actually want to trace. And then with my playhead back here, I'm just gonna hit trace path. Now this automatically creates a null which follows that path. Now it doesn't follow it completely and that's because we need to hit U on the keyboard to bring up those keyframes for that null. And we need to extend this out to match keyframes that we had created for that shape path animation. So now you can see it's stuck to the front of that animation, right? And that's exactly what we want. So now what we can do with that ship layer, I'm gonna bring my ship straight in on top here. And what I can do is just scale this down slightly. I need to make this layer 3D. And then I can sort of scale this up you might wanna just set your classic 3D view here so you don't get affected if yours is in the advanced view. And what I want to do is just sort of position this so that it lines up with that point. And then you can link it to that null. So now you can see that ship layer is going to follow that null and the orientation all the way through. Now at the moment we can't really see that too well, so to get around that you can always go to your two view and you may have to make your other layers 3D here so you can actually see them. And by using these tools up here, you can sort of adjust it to kind of get the right sort of angle that you need. The other thing I'm also gonna do is just kind of bring this ship up so the bottom of it is just sort of sitting in that into that map. And then I can also just scale this down if I need to, to 
kind of get it to sit in there, make any adjustments that I need. Now while that's going on, what I'm also going to do is go back to my original map layer and with that composition that we're working on, we can drag that in, make it three dimensional, make sure this is on classic 3D and also create a 3D camera here. 35 millimeter will be fine and sort of bring this down, move across here. You can start to see this animation sort of playing out. You'll also need to turn on the constant rasterize to get that ship to sort of pop up into view. You can also adjust here the Y rotation if you want to move it around. I can even just scale this down even more here, sort of position it. And what we're trying to do is basically just get the camera to follow this position of this layer. So of our ship here, we're going to have it maybe sort of start a little bit further back, maybe back here. And then somewhere in the middle, I'm also just going to move this across. And then just sort of position it here. And then again, at the very end, also sort of position that camera. So we kind of get that camera following along. I'm also just going to add a little bit of <coughs> Y rotation here and then just adjust my camera something like this. So you can also just take all of those keyframes, make them easy ease. And for these ones here, what we're going to do is if I select all of these position and point of interest, I'm also going to make them continuous bezier. So that means when we come in here to the animation settings, we can adjust this in the middle and that's going to help smooth out that camera movement. Now you may need to go through and readjust the actual camera placement as a result, but basically it's just about trying to smooth out that animation. So just kind of keep going back through this and readjusting those until you kind of end up with something that you're reasonably happy with. Camera movements can be really complicated and animating them can be, you know, a headache. You can spend most of your time just trying to animate 3D cameras and get the movement right. Those techniques that I've just shown you there will really help. But if you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, then check out my Animation Master course. In that, I take you from an absolute beginner, never used After Effects before, right through to create some really cool animations, map animations, graphics, graphs, right through to some really interesting animated scenes. I also cover 3D cameras in a lot more detail, showing you different techniques that you can use for helping you animate cameras in these exact scenarios. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and I've had loads of positive feedback, including a lot of testimonials. And you can check out a bunch of those testimonials in the link in the description below. But if you're interested in learning more about it and you wanna check out more of those testimonials, there'll be a link down in the description below. So now that we've kind of got this animation, one other thing that I also added on here was a depth of field. So I left this to last mainly because it does become quite taxing on your system to use depth of field. So you need to adjust the aperture and then adjust the position. This just kind of gives it a really nice aesthetic look to the final animation. And we can just kind of go through here and adjust so as the boat comes closer, you'll need to adjust that focal distance. If the blur becomes too much, just adjust that aperture as well, depending on what needs to be done. You can also add on some motion blur if you want some added realism as well. And the other thing I also did here in my original was I sort of animated the boat to sort of pop out of the water. So it just looked a little bit more interesting rather than just being a straight sort of animation. So the way that I did this was I went back to my original composition here. I took that ship layer and I just came down to pre-compose. So you can leave all of the attributes in that layer and then just open that up so you have 
that composition. And then I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and also R create two keyframes. I can hit U to bring up those keyframes. And then what I'm going to do is just create another two here. And with these ones at the beginning, I'm gonna sort of have the ship start just off screen here. You can also add motion blur for that layer if you want a little bit of motion blur. Move this in here. Also make these easy ease. And as the ship sort of comes up, what I want to do is also have it sort of dip down. So maybe a little bit of rotation, something like that. And then sort of back up slightly, something like this. Copy those ones, paste that in again. Maybe bring this rotation back a little bit, something like that bring these ones in. You'll just kind of need to mess around with this to kind of get it into the right position. Maybe delete that rotation keyframe there. Makes it look like the boat's sort of launching out of the map. And if we go back to our map comp, it should automatically update as that boat now moves into position. Now, the other thing you can do is if you need to, just go back here, readjust the height of that layer and it'll automatically make it sit more out of the water or further behind, doesn't really matter. And you might need to also go through and just adjust the camera to take out any of the background layer. You could add a motion tile onto your map layer or even just a solid background to help hide any of those edges. But that's basically how I created this effect. Now you can add all different sort of things. You could add clouds, you could add little rain animations. You could also have other boats sort of passing each other. This is a really cool effect because you can have everything automated so that it always follows that little mass path line as you create it. Now just be careful because you want to create all of your mass paths first before you start going through any further. So make sure you've got all your paths correct, then go through and add all of your animation in after that. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks. You can check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.